This video is brought to you by Campfire. Everyone, there's something really important I need to talk about. Something very serious that affects the lives of people in the real world. Something going on right now that needs to be addressed. I'm, of course, talking about shipping. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, shipping, not to be confused with the logistics of moving items from one location to another, is a fan term for the audience rooting for certain romantic pairings between characters to happen in the story. Basically, fans wish for certain characters to get into romantic relationships, hence fans ship the two characters together. This sounds like good innocent fun, right? Wrong. Shipping is serious business. There is nothing more high stakes and important than two make-believe characters hooking up in order to vicariously satisfy my emotional investment in their entirely fictional lives. Shipping isn't something for casual or hobbyist. You gotta be all in. Victory or death. Handling such a serious subject is a task that any writer should be wary of. That's why Terrible Writing Advice is going to ship all writers with this handy video on how to properly steer their ships through the narrow straits of shipping. Now, the first thing to consider as a writer when it comes to shipping is that the level of vitriol in a fandom shipping debate is inversely proportional to how much the writer cares about their romantic pairings. Basically, if a writer adds no romance into their work, then the fans probably will, even if that's a really bad idea. This is why an author should just tell fans to not ship characters together, because telling people on the internet that they are not allowed to do something always works out. Could a creator just ignore the shipping? Of course not. Gotta double down and let everyone know that this thing bothers them, and that the internet trolls better not do the thing that garners an over-the-top reaction. What else could a creator do to minimize or control shipping in their fandom? Well, the biggest thing is to go through the story rudderless when it comes to the romantic in-game for the characters. This is best accomplished in collaborative projects by making sure every writer on staff have their own preferred romantic in-game for the characters, and then make sure everyone works at cross-purposes. Now the fans can't start the shipping war because the studio staff are already having one. On the other end of the spectrum, when a writer has planned their romantic in-game, they should never stop during the editing process and take a good hard look at the characters to see if their pairing still makes sense. We must stick to the holy outline. Never bother to tighten up the writing to make sure the canon relationship is working, nor bother with a pragmatic pivot to a better pairing. If a writer does decide to pivot, it should be done to appease the loudest fans, rather than a decision made because it makes the story better. And if it doesn't work out, then this method comes with the bonus of being able to lay the blame at the feet of said fans, rather than a creator's lack of either competence or backbone, probably both. Another way to make sure fans don't flock to their own ships is by making sure the canon pairings are... just freaking boring. This is fairly easy to accomplish. No chemistry between the romantic leads, no screen time for the canon love interest, zero scenes that show why the characters work as a couple, or just anything other than the vague sense that a love interest was added in by some editorial mandate. Could the writer introduce new sources of conflict to keep the relationship interesting? No. See, writing about the ins and outs of a long-term relationship is hard. So is actually developing a romantic relationship in a compelling way, other than just dropping the occasional suggestion of sexual tension before tying everything up in the closing scene. I mean, that's if the audience is lucky. The main couple may have to be satisfied with the still picture in the background of the closing credits. But hey, having the canon couple be as compelling as two dish rags tumbling around in a dryer will certainly dissuade shippers from advocating for their own far more interesting and dynamic pairings. Now, if this fails, then a more direct tactic may be needed to stop the shippers. It's time to sink their ships. Torpedoes away. Now, ship sinking is what happens when a writer establishes that a couple will not become a romantic pair in the canon text. This is best accomplished by both characters loudly declaring that they have no romantic interest in one another and then proceed to add in heaps of romantic subtext by accident. A writer could highlight why some couples do not work together in an attempt to dissuade shippers from pairing them. I mean, it won't work. But the main reason to avoid this is that it might at least provide some interesting story opportunities. And if a writer employs all of these tactics, then, well, it still won't stop the shippers even if it can curtail some of it. This is why a writer can just discard all of that. That's right, toss it all in the bin. Containment and curtailment is for suckers who are going to lean into the shipping wars. Is using fan shipping wars as a creator like playing with fire while bathing in a tub full of gasoline? Obviously not. It's more like sailing an oil tanker into 
two munitions dump and that it looks dangerous, but I'm sure it will turn out just fine. By leaning into the shipping wars in promotional material, we can stoke the fans and hype up the next chapter in the story. Just play both sides of the shipping debate against one another. It's free press. Pour on the hype and set everyone's expectations sky high, and only then does a writer truly tip their hand to reveal that while they promised a royal flush, all they really had was a two of hearts, a basic land, a reverse uno card, and a bit of pocket lint. I mean, yes, I promised an LGBTQ ship in the story, but hear me out. What if instead I kill off all those characters for cheap drama? Is it bait and switch? Well, I prefer to call it a landmine because it's loud and flashy, but don't worry, I'm sure it won't blow up in a creator's face if they step on that hot button. Remember, setting the fandom on fire is always a good idea since fire doesn't spread. Creators should never be shy of the potential consequences of stoking the flames of a shipping war because there is just no way it could go wrong at all. Now, this is all well and good for a creator, but what about the fans? Is there any wisdom I could instill upon fans in regards to shipping? Of course! I am a genius after all. The first thing fans need to consider about shipping is some basic etiquette. For example, what if two fans are having a debate about potential pairings, like in a show made for children? And then, what happens if it turns out that both fans prefer different romantic pairings in this show made for children? Since it is a show made for children, the show's creators are probably not going to take any romance very seriously if they even include it at all. Clearly there are no stakes here in this show made for children, and that any shipping is going to be mostly limited to fan fiction. Therefore, how should a fan deal with fans of a rival ship? Well, obviously, they must die. Attack. It's the only option. If it's one thing the internet has taught me, it's that anyone with an opposing view is literally Hitler. I tear them down, crush their arguments, insult their face, their mom, their mom's face, their lineage, their hopes and dreams, and then rub salt on the wound by insulting their ship. This is war. There can be only one winner. A fan has to win this battle or else... Um, these characters in a show made for children might wind up in the wrong relationship. The stakes couldn't be higher. Clearly there is no room for polite disagreement or getting a life outside of fiction. If that's not enough, then a fan should expand their war onto the creator of the story. I'm sure sending in poorly worded death threats to the writer or showrunners will totally change their mind of which characters wind up with who in a show made for children. More importantly, this is an excellent use of time and resources and not a frivolous indulgence brought about by projecting onto characters who don't exist while we live in a world full of real people with real problems. If, for some reason, these explicit of written death threats fail to stop the opponents of a fan ship, then they will have to resort to fan fiction. Now, writing shipping fix could be like a whole other video and probably a video better focused on writing romance specifically, so I will only touch on a few key things. Now, the biggest obstacle to writing fan fiction for a fan's preferred ship is usually the canon pairing. The best way to handle this is to viciously murder the canon love interest in the most petty, brutal way possible. If this doesn't sit right with the fanfic writer, then just be sure to write the offending love interest as a controlling evil psychopath for no adequately explained reason. The point is, is to make sure all obstacle to the fan's ship is removed with the grace and subtlety normally reserved for the Nevada test site. If the fanfic writer wanted something a little more subtle though, then they could just settle for quietly lobotomizing the rival characters off screen or just shove them into the arms of some side character and move on. Remember, never demonstrate, instead demonize. Don't show why the canon pairing would never work in a way that makes sense, sticks to the spirit of the canon characters and shows meaningful conflict. If I do that, then who will show up out of nowhere to hurt the protagonist so I can play out my twisted hurt comfort fic? With all obstacles removed from a fanfic writer's path, what comes next? Nothing! Enjoy your ship. Really, that's all there is to it. Once the romantic rival is dead, lobotomized, and or shipped off with a side character, then the rest is just saccharine lovey-dovey garbage with maybe a lemon or two thrown in. Internal conflict? Introspection? Showing why the fan pairing would work better than the canon one? Nah. I want to have my cake and eat it too, and ship it with some sparkling wine while I'm at it. Besides, fanfic writers are excused from creatively pushing their boundaries and should be free to wallow in their indulgence. What about when a fanfic writer should not ship characters together? Don't worry about that. Never consider that chemistry and compatibility are in fact two different things. Characters can share chemistry, but not be romantically compatible. Impossible. What if all the characters are asexual aliens or magical creatures not driven by a biological imperative to reproduce? In truth, they all secretly want each other's pants, and anyone who says otherwise is just blatantly ignoring the obvious subtext. What about shipping underage characters? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, yeah.
yeah, you have fun with that. Just be sure to express shock and surprise when other people find it gross. Now, with all this fighting over the romantic lives of people who don't exist, could a writer just decide to, like, ignore all this nonsense and not bother with it? Why, some foolish writers may even decide to write a story that doesn't have any romance at all. This is a big misstep, but if a writer avoids any romance or shipping in their work, then they can always just kick that can down the road. Then, during the epilogue, they can resolve all the shipping there and sink a fleet's worth of ships all in one sitting. Could the writer just have left things open-ended? Of course not. I gotta get the last word in, no matter how little I care about the romance in my work. See, I just sank the fan's ships by keeping low and striking from the depths. So basically, the best way to deal with shipping is with unrestricted submarine warfare. Now, if only I could send all of the annoying shippers down to Davy Jones's locker. What is this garbage? This is just JP in a green shirt. And after all that build-up, what a letdown. Oh no, it's him. Who? Yeah, who in the plan are you? I am greed. You're greedy? Get back in the box. No, I am greed itself. JP's inner greed may manifest thanks to your desires. What do you want? Everything. We will stop you. We won't let you have any more sponsors. You mean like this video sponsor, Campfire? Ah, crap. I set him up for a smooth segue. Campfire is a series of tools to help organize, improve, and showcase your writing and is used by over 100,000 writers. Utilize character sheets, timelines, detailed relationship webs, and a full manuscript editors that represent notes in Campfire Write. Or hone your craft in Campfire Learn as a central hub of education resources. Campfire Explore lets you share your work with the live community and build a following. Select what parts to share and craft a homepage to present your story. Creating a Campfire account is free and only pay for the features you need with a flexible pricing structure ranging from a monthly subscription as low as a few cents a month to affordable lifetime purchases. TWA fans can write better stories faster with Campfire at bit.ly slash TWA2 2-22. Don't forget to use the code TWA to get 20% off all lifetime purchases of Campfire modules. Link is in the description below. Wait, did he just get stronger? He'll grow more powerful with each sponsor. His mere presence threatens the end of the very TWA expanded universe. Soon we will be overrun with ads like never before. We will have to band together to stop the evil ads before they destroy the universe. Oh, how little you understand, Sir Knight. I was there when this world began. I saw the Inners born and scattered across the TWA universe when JP broke himself into smaller shards. I watched as the world expanded and as all of your little genres came crawling out of the primordial energy of creation. It has grown and prospered and now lies ripe for a reaping. How you fail to understand this world's true nature when you claim to fight against advertising. Oh, how the knights of artistic integrity have shielded themselves from the truth. The truth that ads are the source of this world's evil. Oh no, my poor little knights. Did you not know why JP made this world? This entire TWA universe is a mere construct designed to help sell his books. This universe's very inception was made as a vehicle for promotion. It can't be. Open your eyes, little one. See the world for what it is. Impossible. There's no way. Oh, yes, it is. The entire terrible writing advice expanding universe is, in fact, one giant advertisement. No!